<laughs> you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, a mediator, an advocate, a judge, you are the ambassador, you are the representative, you are everything, you are a mom, you fact you are a cook, you are a chef, you are a cleaner, you are a nanny, you are everything in the classroom. So if you think that teaching is business as usual, then you are making a huge mistake. So Hello, <laughs> hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Noya, and I'm the excellent teacher. In this video, you've seen the title already. I'm going to be sharing five misconceptions that I think parents have about teachers. But this is going to be the episode one, episode two will be dropping very soon. So I'd like you to smash on that subscribe button, click on the notification bell, and that way you'd get notified when I drop the part two. Of this video, it's a huge misconception, and this was a misconception that crossed the groups. So it's something that cuts across schools, teachers, and parents of people all over the world. This video, <laughs> I made a request, and I said that if you've seen any Nigerian teacher YouTuber, a full-time teacher who is also a YouTuber, would you please be kind to put the person's name in the comment section or the link to the person's channel in the comment section? I'd like to connect. So, Thank you all for supporting my channel. Thank you for the subscribe accounts. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you and thank you. So if you like this video after it's done, I'd like you to please give it a like. Is that a lot of people think that teaching is easy. What? You think teaching is easy? Since people just say you go to school and all you do is S E C U C E U take your bag tell the children goodbye it's just i'm going home and then you're coming back home your work is done and then there's 30 billion in your account that's all that teaching is all about excuse me you just assume that it's really easy so wait now let me tell you this if you have 25 children in your class it's expected that 25 of them learn every time you teach that's the expectation 100 percent wait did the other children's parents pay school fees so that you can teach some other people's children everybody paid school fees so that their child or their children can be taught so you have to learn the way children learn so that you can teach them the way they would understand or the way they can learn if that really makes sense let me say that again you have to learn to teach children the way they learn so that they can learn the way they learn from you so i hope it makes sense it means that every child's learning pattern and style that i've learned it means that for every lesson that you have to teach you have to study plan prepare for every child in the class to learn and you think that's an easy job now hold up it's interesting to also know that note that teaching has not taken place if learning is not internalized so if you teach a particular concept and all the children in that class do not get that concept or a few children get it or even half of the class gets it and there are some children who have not internalized what we have taught we have not taught anything teaching has not taken place so if you think you're just going to come up and say two plus two is four and then there's one xyz child that got it without any problem and then there are other children who did not get it and you have taught you have not even done anything in fact your work has not started so if you think that teaching is business as usual you're making a huge mistake so that's a huge misconception that people have they think it's just about coming to school getting a piece of chalk writing on the board and then the children automatically understand if they don't understand whether well, that's their problem you pick up your bag and then you go home on the day of reckoning you'd come and talk when it's time for evaluation or supervision or monitoring and then they ask you questions on why this particular child has gone through your class and has not improved that's when you know that teaching honestly it's not as easy as it looks. Now, the second misconception is that a lot of people feel that the only thing teachers go to school to do is teach. Now, that's different from the first one that teaching is easy. In this one, you just think that when you get to school, all that you do is teach, and that's all. Mm -mm. That's not all. You have to plan your class, plan your lesson, plan yourself, plan your life plan the activity plan everything that you have to do in that class there's an assembly that you have to conduct there's virtually you have to learn hmm. 
you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, a mediator, an advocate, a judge, you are the ambassador, you are the representative, you are everything, you are a mom, in fact you are a cook, you are a chef, you are a cleaner, you are a nanny, you are everything in the classroom. Because if there's an issue in your classroom, would you continue to teach? No, you have to pass and, and take charge of whatever situation it is that's happening in your classroom. So that's part of some of the crazy things that you have to do as a teacher and a lot of people think that since uh, what, what's the what's the big deal we have to learn a lot of things psychologically you have to be a psychologist you have to be a psychiatrist you have to be able to understand that oh this particular child was the one saying the truth or oh, this one wasn't telling the truth when the situation happened or when the matter happened you have to um, to apportion the right sanction for a certain behavior and then you also have to understand that children are from different background different different background different religion different countries different homes broken homes good homes happy families sad families children who are hungry children who have eaten children who have misunderstood children who have been abused children who are fantastic children who are loved all categories of children come into your classroom and you have to manage all of that so if you aren't um uh, put together as a teacher if you haven't com composed consider to learn to hold your bladder which is something else that you have to learn to do there are a lot of activities that are lined up for you to learn then there's projects you have to understand the concept of the project that you have to plan the project there's marking for you there's work for you there's comments that you have to write for every child as you mark marking is not like what it used to be before where you just put a stroke and then you write scene and then you put your date on it no when you mark this time you have to put comments Sometimes comments that people are not even reading. You have to write comments to state the things that you think you like about that child in that lesson that has taken place. And they think you think that the child should work on and then you're giving a total and complete feedback of your lesson to that child in that particular note and then you have to do that for maybe 150 children there's comments for results you have to put different comments and sometimes you have the comment bank that you have to draw from but then you don't write the same comments for the same child or the same children because okay so number three misconception is that is that a lot of people think that <laughs> teachers are not tech savvy and wait I think that teaching is about the only profession that makes use of multiple devices, multiple IT devices, starting from, from the hardware to the software. I think it's only teaching. Now hold on before you start your argument. Let me tell you some of the some of the gadgets and tools that we have to make use of every day. You have your own device to work with, you have a laptop or a notebook that you have to use. Then there's an interactive whiteboard that you have to operate that's three then there's a system in your classroom that you have to work with that link is linked to the interactive whiteboard that's four there's a learning device for every child to use that you have to manage that is five there's another device in the computer suite that you have to work with every time you have to maybe go for planning or that you have to maybe use for result or for some sort of feedback that's fine there's one in the library that you have to also use for perhaps you want to go to the library to work with children or whatever that's it there's another one in the science room that is attached to your device that works as a microscope and all of these carry different devices and you have to use all of them i generating one that you have to use for each child so it's really complex it should we even start with the software even now and then they have software installed in all of these devices that you have to learn to use and believe me <laughs> if you haven't mastered these devices you would not be able to stay in the classroom conveniently so their handwriting software that you have to learn to use you have to learn some point the fact as you're trying to get used to one particular software you're getting more you're getting introduced into more software and you've not finished learning one your another one is coming the world is moving software so learn to use these tools to teach so it's really very crazy in your busy schedule in your tight shadow you have other things coming up for you to to do again as teachers and people think that we have all the time in the world and we're not very very busy people so these are misconceptions Another interesting misconception is that a lot of people think that teachers have plenty of time. Hey! Mm -hmm. How? Oh, yeah. time. Now, let me remind you that teaching is about the only profession where you close from work and you resume for another work at home. Haven't you heard of teachers who take work home? Uh -huh. And then some of them bring this work home back to school, I beg your pardon, without even doing them 
or I'll be like, even getting them done. You don't even have time for yourself. And I'd like to say that if you have not learned to hold your bladder as a teacher, then you have not had experience in teaching. The fact that you also have your life to live. So a lot of people also think that a lot of parents or a lot of people think that teachers don't have life to live. Teachers don't have any life to live. That the only life they have is just to come to school, teach, get their bars, go back home, continue marking, continue commenting, continue um, everything about school, and then you return to school. Okay. Some people don't even believe that teachers get married, and so they see you maybe after a couple of months when you get married, and they're wondering, ah, are you married? <laughs> no, I'm not married. Or they see you with a child. Is this your child? Eh? So teachers still have children. Oh, some students don't even know that teachers have parents. Some children don't know that teachers have their own biological children so there's a lot of misconception that about teaching and learning so this is just episode one and let's um, keep our fingers crossed for episode two of this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up do not forget to subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video bye for now if you are new to my channel click on the subscribe button tap on the notification bell like it comment and share thank you